Okay, move right on to item 10, conflict of business. We're going to receive an oral report on the city's youth after school programs and summer and holiday camps. Council. Um, my name is Dee Kranitz, Recreation Services Supervisor, and it's my pleasure this evening to share with you how through the City Council's leadership and creation of the after school and camp programs, we have been able to touch children's lives by delivering safe, fun, and quality programming. One of these programs is the after school program. So while it's not uncommon for a school district to run an after-school program, it's uncommon for a city to run an after-school program and provide a quality, affordable, and enriching program for the community. The programs are very diverse with participants and staff. The program started in 2002 at three elementary schools, Portola, Allen, and Bel Air Elementary School, with 70 students total seven staff, and a total revenue of $77,000. Today, we deliver the program in two ways, and I want you to note that the program starts um, when the last bell rings until 6 p.m., Monday through Friday. So I want to start off with the After School Adventures program, also known as ASA. Um, we house that program at Portola, John Muir, Rollingwood, El Crystal School, elementary schools, grades first through five, and also at Parkside Intermediate School, grades six through eight. We have approximately 30 to 70 participants at each site, and that is a fee-based program. We charge um, $125 a month uh, per child. During the After School Ventures program, we offer a um, work hour, classic indoor-outdoor games, arts and crafts program, cooking, um, sports components, and uh, much more. The next program I want to talk about is our after school education and safety program, the ACES program, which is housed at Bel Air and Allen schools. We collaborate with the school district who is a recipient of a state grant, and we are the third party who provides the programs at the schools. And also we host uh, for grades first through fifth. We have approximately 87 to 100 participants at each school site. And the program is free of charge for families whose children attend Bel Air and Allen Elementary School. The program offers homework hour, educational, um, and fun enrichment components, such as, again, cooking um, and a technology component, which the children can use laptops, and we have robotics that they can work with. Um, and also iPads. We have a PE component, gardening. Uh, we offer social science enrichments and much more. The list goes on. And the leaders are very creative and uh, they're very resourceful and they do their homework uh, to provide these activities for the children. So there are, right now, today, there are a total of 476 participants in our after school program, 33 staff, and we generate over a half a million dollars in revenue. A constraint we see of the program needs and a demand that can't be met at this time is serving kindergarten. Um, this is related to the lack of classroom space within the schools during the regular school day, and kindergarten gets out earlier, around 11.30. They are just at 11.30. Also, due to lack of avail availability of classrooms, we do, we do have a wait list at several of our school sites. So I'd like to talk about our summer camp programs. As you may know, our um, summer day camp program is housed in beautiful San Bruno City Park and at our Veterans War Memorial Gymnasium. And our popular traditional day camp program encompasses a variety of activities such as swimming, field trips. We have a specialized arts and crafts and sports component where we bring in um, special rec specialists and instructors, I should say, who will 
work with the children um, during uh, block times to get specialized um, um, instruction in, say, for example, soccer or possibly the, um, the children get to participate in softball for the first time or baseball. Um, and also arts and crafts, they get to uh, get hands-on with different arts and crafts programs. And we, all ha and we have a weekly theme for each age group and the children are divided into age-specific groups um, and they are co-ed groups. And um, we serve that program for ages three and a half to 13 years of age. Since its operational start in 2002, the program had 55 participants and 13 staff with a revenue of $100,000. Today, just this last summer alone, we served over 2,000 youth over 10 weeks. It's an all-time record high enrollment um, with approximately 225 to 250 campers per week over a 10-week um, program span. I just want to note that most cities, um, when when they run their summer day camp programs, it's just over um, an eight week operation. Um, and again, this program um, this year brought in over a um, half a million dollars in revenue as well. Our holiday camp programs have increased with number of participants as well, and it runs similar to the summer day camp program, just minus the uh, swimming uh, component and uh, the field trips. So I just wanna take a moment to talk about the positive impacts for the pr of the programs. We continue to collaborate and build a positive relationship with the school district, principals, teachers, parents, and families in the community. We help increase the self-esteem and independence with our participants in a safe and supportive environment. And I wanna give you an example of that. So we have children with special needs who do participate in our programs. We have one particular participant and I could just picture him now. Um, he has autism and um, the parents were unsure at first whether or not they wanted to put him in the camp program and we gave it a try. And um, at the time he did not want to socialize with other campers. And um, our staff fosters friendship among the camp groups and we do start off every week at camp, first off with icebreakers and team building activities to engage the children so that um, whether you're a 10 week camper, you're here all 10 weeks, we keep it fresh and exciting for those campers. But if you're just coming for a week, we wanna make sure you're you know, um, part of the group, part of the team. And um, so the rec leaders were able to encourage him to participate in the camp activities and um, the other children were playing with him and helping him um, get acclimated. Um, since then, uh, he's come back uh, year after year over the last five years, and he'll be coming back next year. So uh, also I wanna talk about how um, the department provides local volunteer employment opportunities. We train top-notch caliber staff, um, and it helps, our, um, helps staff gain uh, foundation skills, such as teamwork, maturity, responsibility, accountability, and professionalism. So some rec leaders come into um, the department um, thinking that their careers are going to be possibly um, something else, maybe, like maybe in, um, possibly being an accountant or um, maybe in the tech industry. But after their rewarding experience as a recreation leader and um, what they had, have gained from their experience, they tend to go on to a career path of teaching, uh, maybe social services, recreation, and some um, actually go on to serve our country. So we do have year-round leader retention. We, I, um, we have 43 staff that make up the after-school and camp, summer camp program total. Due to the exceptional training, um, we also bring in specialized instructors. For example, we work with the school district who has helped us bring in specialists to teach our staff to work with children with special needs. Our programs evolve by uh, keeping up with the trends and we have high enrollment and full capacity in most areas. We also provide parent feedback with online surveys and last but not least, safety. 
impeccable, we have an impeccable safety record instilling peace of mind so participants are going home happy, healthy, and safe. So on behalf of all the staff who deliver the programs and myself, I want to thank you to thank the council for your leadership and the opportunities for our growth and accomplishments. Well, <laughs> thank you very much. It's, uh, it's a program that's uh, known far and wide. And the cool thing about it is you're helping to prepare kids for the future. And that's really important. I mean, you're right there where where it really meets, uh, the rubber kind of meets the road there with the kids going forward. And you, you set a foundation. So, uh, and it looks like you're having a pretty good time doing it, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I sure do. So, yeah. Connie? Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could just add, um, it, it, it was my pleasure to um, ask Dee to come here tonight after I had the opportunity a couple of months ago to hear her tell me from her own personal perspective about what she does and how it adds value to the city. I was extremely impressed um, and having come from a recreation background myself, starting out in uh, my career in that field and understanding the importance that, it, uh, that these programs offer not only to the community and to the youth themselves, but to us as a, as a society. Um, I thought it would be useful. This is obviously not an action item tonight. It's just one of those things that uh, we wanted to make sure that both you and uh, members of the public who might be watching have an opportunity to hear from the inside um, a little bit about what it takes and what the programs are producing. Obviously, we have a wonderful track record of growth and development of the programs. And I think a uh, conversation with any of our participants or our staff would reveal some really interesting insights about what the program really means and how it has enriched lives, uh, built uh, careers, and um, made a, a tremendous contribution overall. Um, Dee herself is a product of our leadership training program, um, starting at a, as, a, as a much younger woman. Um, and she's only one she's still of, young. <laughs> of, she is, yes, uh, but um, uh, many of our staff actually have gone on to very rewarding careers uh, after beginning as, as young students, as volunteers and recreation leaders in our programs. It's one of the sort of unsung um, success stories of what this type of program does for its community. So thank you very much, Dee, for being here tonight. And I'm going to jump in there because I don't believe it. I, I, I couldn't be prouder because Dee's been here a long time and seen it develop. And just thinking, looking down at Irene, 20 years ago, none of this existed. And it was Irene's leadership when she came on the council and she grabbed me by the neck and said, you're you're going to help do this, and we're going to take care of the youth. And we got a youth committee together, and the, the issues were we need after-school care. Yeah. And then we need, a, we need a summer program because all our kids, all our families are going to Millbrae. Mm -hmm. Now you're getting Millbrae kids coming to San Bruno. And because I drive through that park, and I've said it many times, <coughs> Summertime, when you drive through the park on a beautiful day and you see all these kids have, you know, doing activities and everything, it just gives you that great feeling that this is a great place to live and bring up your family. So thank you so much. We need, because of the new website coming out, we need that to be one of the first features to really highlight what's great about San Bruno. Thank you so much. Do the chair. I, I know it was just an oral report and thank you, um, but I would have I would like to see, as uh, to go off what Ken's saying, because so it is in the packet of some sort, put it on our website. I, I think because it's interesting facts and numbers that of course you're explaining, for me to regurgitate it back to somebody who asked me the question, I don't have it. So I think oral reports are great in our, their presentation, but I'd love to see the follow-up information so that we have it and it's noted. So people can look back and see where, we're, where we've been, where we've gone, where we're gonna go. Um, and, and yes, uh, Dee and your brother were, were uh, rec leaders, and I remember those days way back then, and so, uh, or Julie Kalea, who was helped instrumental in, in painting the school district, was once a rec leader here, and became a teacher in the San Bernardino Park School District, because she found her passion. So it has evolved this community to where 
I see uh, young people now are turning 40 who are uh, kids when I was a rec leader uh, or within the rec uh, program and working for the city of San Bruno. So it's amazing to see uh, how much uh, it does uh, play into the community and how you still see them come back home and a lot of them have stayed here in this town and called that home and now are raising their families. So I think it drives a bigger uh, part of who we are in this community and it affects so many people as they grow up and for those that get touched and, and they get the bug as far as wanting to give back and be a part of that in their life and uh, for what they experience now be on the other side of it. So uh, again, love to see the information down for us and uh, thank you for the report. Great. Thank you very much. Good job.